This is Mark DeLeggi. Um, I am in Charleston, South Carolina. Come visit if you'd like. Uh, I'm a professor of medicine at the Medical University of South Carolina and also the co-owner of DeLeggi Medical. Today, I'm here to speak to you all about trace element uh, deficiency as part of a PN or parental nutrition drug shortage uh, profile. When we talk about drug shortages in the United States, um, it often revolves around issues with drug manufacturing. So there could be a manufacturer that lacks the source ingredients or perhaps their equipment's malfunctioning. The FDA may have come in and shut a manufacturer down for some correction or corrective actions, or perhaps a manufacturer may have made a, a business decision that they're no longer going to be making a, a specific product. So there are drug shortages, and we're going to focus on trace elements specifically here in one minute. I would say to you that across the U.S., when you look at drug shortages, about 80% of them are with generic injectable medications like trace elements. Um, and so it's not uncommon for us uh, with PN patients to have drug shortages that we are uh, dealing with with regards to patient care. And lots of times, especially with PN, there's a single manufacturer in the US. So for example, there's a single manufacturer of, we'll say trace elements. And so when that particular manufacturer has an issue, it has tremendous ramifications because there is no backup supplier uh, unless you go outside the US. And I would say for this crowd is, there's no one standard approach to drug shortages in the U.S. from the perspective of the FDA, um, hospitals, specialty pharmacy companies, or other healthcare delivery systems. It's a it's a kind of a ragtag approach to dealing with drug shortages. Let's talk about trace elements because that's what the focus is going to be today. Trace elements. Um, have numerous vital, vital roles in the body, including gene expression and others. We're not going to be lecturing you on trace elements today, but it wasn't um, until 1979, and, and frankly, that's when PN was first being administered around that time period, about a decade prior to that, is when the Nutrient Advisory Group from the American Medical Association came out and had a advisement about the needs for trace elements and patients on PN. And from this guidance came the first combination TE product uh, for adults and pediatrics. There's only one supplier of that at that time, which was Multitrace 5 uh, for adults, which included zinc, selenium, chromium, manganese, and copper. And one for pediatric, Multitrace 4, which were the same exact uh, trace elements in different concentrations but no selenium. And recently, we've seen a change. We've seen the multi-trace five replaced by a product known as Trelement uh, four for uh, people with a body weight greater than 10 kilogram. And that contains zinc, selenium, copper, and manganese. So if you look above to what was uh, on the market and, uh, originally, it no longer has chromium. And a pediatric product, has been uh, developed for those weighing less than 10 kilograms, no, no, known as multitrace, um, which multitrace rather, which replaces the multitrace four, and the product contains zinc, selenium, copper, and manganese. Again, no chromium. And then, if you happen to wander across the pond over to Europe, you notice they also have trace element products from a multitude of manufacturer, but they contain a number of additional trace elements including iodine, iron, molybdenum, chromium, and fluoride. Now, the reason I mention all this is because in the US, we have a single source supplier of trace elements. They do have a new trace element formulation based upon some recommendations uh, from experts around the world that's been reformulated. But again, we have a single source supplier. So that does create some risk for drug shortage. Now, when we talk about drug shortages and we talk about PN trace element shortage, the question then is, okay, I'm used to giving my patients trace elements once a day for every day they're on PN. What do I do when there's a shortage? 
And so the ideal thing would be that we together would be able to identify trace element deficiencies. And therefore we would be able to identify people who have clinically significant problems from trace element deficiencies. And we'd love to do that with a blood test. So we would love to be able to draw serum or blood and say, you're deficient. But the reality is that the biochemical identification, so a blood test telling you someone is deficient or toxic can be helpful if you're following trends, but it's much more convincing in the context that someone has clinical symptoms consistent with that trace element deficiency. If you're looking just at laboratory analysis alone, you may be able to look at trends over time to see where things are ha happening with a blood or serum test. But again, it would be much more convincing if we had trace element deficiency, deficiency biochemically identified coupled with clinical symptoms. Um, so here, I've taken the four trace elements that are in the current products for uh, trace element, uh, multi-dose trace element uh, use with parental nutrition. And you can see here zinc, copper, chromium, and selenium, and you can see the clinical symptoms associated with that. Now, if life was that easy, it'd be grand, and it's not. What I mean by that is we can have an occurrence of trace element deficiency. It may cause us to change how we're dosing trace elements in given patients. We do have blood tests. They're not perfect by any means. And then we have clinical symptoms, but you have to be looking for these routinely and partnering them with your blood test in order to be convinced about the fact that there may be clinical symptoms and or clinically relevant laboratory tests showing deficiency in a patient or toxicity if we were dealing with toxicity. If you remember, I said that there are recommendations for what we do with PN drug shortages like trace element deficiency. Aspen's recommendations are that we should first consider if the patient could take an oral or an oral product. And we should be prioritizing supplies for the most vulnerable patients. We'll talk more about that. We would lean against putting any additives into maintenance IV fluids. So just giving someone trace elements uh, with IV fluids. We'd want to reevaluate any nutrient replacement algorithms that we have in place at our facility. And we would consider utilizing standard P PN solutions as appropriate. And these are pre-mixed uh, PN solutions that already have products uh, within them. Now, when I, when, I, when I look at this, and again, this is for all PN drug shortages, not trace elements alone. You can see here, there's a kind of a potpourri of suggestions of what to do. But what do we do specifically for trace element deficiency? And when I look at this, I want you to look at figure one here. And what I've outlined here is that there's a trace element shortage that's been identified at your facility or perhaps with a specialty pharmacy company or perhaps somewhere else uh, in the world where we're caring for patients on PN. The first thing I recommend you do is create a drug shortage team. That should be a multidisciplinary team. And on the left, you can see here that I'm leaning on monitoring internal and external TE sort, uh, trace element sources. So you should know what you have and where you can get it. And then again, based on our Aspen recommendation, we're gonna look to see if anybody can, can receive oral trace elements. In the middle here, you can see that this drug shortage team will identify the most vulnerable patients by definition. Maybe we'll go to an every other day dose of trace elements in the right uh, patient population. Um, we'll also, this team wanna be aware if there's any FDA consideration for international import of trace element products, depending upon the length of time we're gonna be without given trace elements from our manufacturer. And we're gonna to wanna to develop guidelines to monitor for trace element deficiency and how we would treat someone with an identified deficiency so we're not wasting product. Lastly, on the right, you can see that we'd wanna create a lot of education for clinicians and patients around trace element shortage and plans on how we're gonna address that. And lastly, you may be in a situation where if in fact you have single trace elements available for use, 
perhaps like zinc or selenium to name a few, you could use those products. But again, we have to be very, very careful about not extending or using our supply when we don't need to and using it appropriately. So in conclusion, I would say this about trace elements. Number one, drug shortages are becoming more common for a variety of reasons. Often drug products for creating PN solutions only have a single source of manufacturing in the US. And again, I want you to pay special attention to that because those are the highest risk products. The uh, trace elements are a, a single source supplier in the US. So once a shortage is identified, you have to have proactive planning take place and you have to address the most vulnerable patients early on. Education and guidance to clinicians and patients is critical so they know and understand what you're doing and why. And you should make as a clinician, every effort to report harm that comes to a patient from trace element deficiency or other PN nutrient components to the FDA MedWatch program so that we can track injury that may occur uh, from patients who are lacking certain drug components, such as trace elements. I wanna thank you for joining me today in discussing trace element deficiencies and drug shortages, and I look forward to talking to you in the future. Mm -hmm.